Okay, we have another integral here today from the MIT Integration Meet 2022, regular season number 16. We have the integral from zero to 10 of the ceiling function times the max of x to the k over k factorial dx. So what I wanna do here is kind of break things up. Before I even think about this max function, let's just worry about the ceiling function. So if we had this much simpler integral, if we were just integrating the ceiling function of dx from zero to 10, What's gonna work well on the floor and ceiling functions, if we break up the bounds on integer values, it's gonna simplify this. The floor function or the ceiling function always returns an integer. The ceiling's gonna round it up to the next lowest integer. So for example, I'll start by creating an integral from zero to one. Now all of our x values are gonna be between zero and one. The ceiling's gonna round it up to this upper bound and we're gonna have just one dx. And then for the next one, same kind of thing, going from one to two, ceiling's gonna round us up. These x values are gonna be between one and two, and the ceiling's gonna round us up to two. And so this is just gonna keep going like this, not to infinity, but the last one, let's just do the last one out. So the last one, we're going from nine to 10. X values between nine and 10, ceiling rounds us up to 10. And so what I wanna do is just generalize any one of these integrals. So we could write it as an integral from n minus one to n, where the ceiling part, it's always gonna round us up to this n, so we're gonna have n, and then let's bring this max function back into it. So we're gonna have it just times all this max stuff. And then in order to capture all this, we can put this inside of a sum where we're gonna be going, our n value is gonna start at one, like this is gonna be our first one here. So if we have it starting at one, this lower bound zero, and I was gonna put down infinity, but actually it's gonna be 10. And now we're starting to get somewhere, but what we really need to do is we need to deal with this thing right here. And this is actually not too bad. One thing to remember is we have this condition over here that k, we want k to be an integer greater than or equal to zero. And so what I can do is kind of expand this thing out to get a better sense of it. So for like k factorial, if we were to break out all the terms, it's gonna be k times k minus one times k minus two all the way to the last term is going to be a one. And then for x to the k, we can expand that out like multiplication. And I can write it as x times x times x all the way to an x where we know we're going to have k x's. So the important thing to notice about it is we actually have the same number of terms in the numerator and the denominator. So you can kind of think about it as like multiplying these separate fractions. I'm making a mess of it, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. And all we need to do is we just need to maximize this thing. Maybe a good way to think about this is with an example. Now with our x value, we actually know, so k is an integer, but x is never an integer in any one of these, because it's always gonna be approaching the bounds, but it's never like technically at the bound. So let's just pretend x is like 3.5. So just as this example, for this first one, we got 3.5 over one, and then we're multiplying by 3.5 over two, and then the thing to notice about this, where 3.5 is greater than one, I don't know what that is exactly, but we just increased this total thing. So then if we do it again, and we multiply by 3.5 over three, we've increased it a little more. But if I do one more term and I multiply by 3.5 over four, this is less than one. By multiplying this in, now we've actually decreased the whole number and we're asked to get the max. So we never wanna do this. We never wanna multiply in a number that's less than one, so we need to get rid of this. So the maximum for this particular example is gonna stop at three. But now what I wanna do is just generalize it for what we have here because we don't know a specific value. But what we do know is for each of these, the x value is gonna be less than n and it's gonna be greater than n minus one. And now this last number that we chose right here, this is actually our k value that we want. In this case, it's gonna be three. So what we found here is we need k to be an integer, but we need k to be less than x. So we want k to be less than x, one number that works is n minus one. You can't choose the next higher integer because that would be n, that's greater than x, so that's not gonna work for our k value. But you also, you couldn't have k equal to n minus two. That would be like if we stopped right here. The problem with choosing this value is it's not gonna be the max because here we were able to increase it, so this wouldn't be the max value. So it turns out the value we wanna choose for k is gonna be always n minus one. That's gonna be for every single one of these integrals, this is gonna be what we want for k. So let's just get rid of all this stuff and we'll just plug that back into our integral right here. 
And so now here we've plugged in our k value. Notice I dropped the max because by plugging it in minus one, we always get the max. But then from here, within the integral, all the end stuff is just a constant. So I can bring that outside of the integral still within the sum. But now here we can just go ahead and integrate this using power rule. So doing that here, we're gonna get x to the n over n, and we just need to evaluate that from n minus one to n. Now at this point, you may notice we could simplify this a few different ways. I'm gonna put it off because I know we have to simplify later. So we'll leave that and we'll just evaluate these bounds. Plugging in the n, we're gonna have, this is gonna become n to the n. Plug in n minus one and we get n minus one to the n. And then with the minus sign here, let's break this up into two sums. So for the first one, now on this first one, I am going to simplify this part. We're going to create that n times n minus 1 factorial is the same thing as n factorial. Multiply an n in here, and we get n to the n plus 1. And then on the second one, what I want to do is notice that we've got n minus 1 and n minus 1 here. So I want to write it that way. So we'll have n times n minus 1 to the n. And then in the denominator, now we've got n to the n minus 1 factorial. Now I can cancel out these n's. Maybe I could have done that a different way. I don't know. But I do know that this definitely doesn't go to infinity. I keep wanting to do that. I'm used to writing infinity there. And now at this point, we're almost done. But we want to simplify this and get this into some kind of nice numeric value. I think on this one, see, they're kind of shifted. We want these to work together. And we get this n minus 1 thing going on here. What I can do for an index change, what if I add one here? I just need to do it everywhere. Add one here, add one here. And then over here, we just need to subtract one. So doing this, we'll keep this one exactly the same. And then updating our second sum. Now the upper bound is a nine. This becomes n equals zero. Then with all the plus ones, we just now we have an n, but we've got n to the n plus one over n factorial. And this right here, this is exactly what I wanted because now this matches this. This is gonna allow us to put these two together. Now, one thing you'll notice I don't really like zero there because if you plug in zero, the whole term's zero. So basically I can actually just wipe out this term without changing it. And then at this point we have almost the same exact thing here and here. We're basically subtracting off nine out of the 10 terms. So what you can do is just plug in 10 and finish it off. But let's make it a little more clear. I'm gonna break out that 10 term separately. So at 10, when n is 10, it's gonna be 10 to the 11 over 10 factorial, plus just the rest of the sum up to nine now, because we pulled off that 10 term. And then we'll just leave this one exactly as it is. And then these two things, these are identical. So this cancels to zero. And what we're left with is 10 to the 11 over 10 factorial. But one last thing, 10 to the 11, I can write as 10 times 10 to the 10. And 10 factorial, I can write as 10 times nine factorial. The only reason I do that is because then I can cancel off 10s, and then for my final solution, we just get 10 to the 10 over 9 factorial, and that's it. Okay, there you go. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.